well, I want to very much continue doing more in-depth technical explanations of things, but the priority there definitely goes to my actual in-person job of teaching undergraduate students because they're trying to actually get through their degree and understand intro-level physics, and so I kind of have to prioritize that. But I did want to talk about something that is always kind of on my mind, which is sort of what is the point of doing science? And that's a question I feel like has a lot of fairly obvious answers. The various reasons that the students in my undergraduate class are there are a lot of those answers, right? Is, you know, we want to be able to apply scientific principles to, you know, do things that will improve human quality of life, uh, you know, provide better health care, uh, you know, make better technology. There's mostly sort of various engineering majors in the class. And so combination of applied science and engineering are two of the reasons to do science, which, you know, there are differences between applied science and engineering and between sort of healthcare professions and applied science and between those both of those things and engineering. But obviously they all overlap a lot and they're all a little bit distinct from sort of doing basic science. But most science is applied in some form or another, uh, even fundamental quote-unquote research is usually at least has an eye however far in the future towards some sort of an application. It's just that, uh, you know, what we call sort of, you know, pure science is just things where we have, you know, less of an idea what the application will be, and applied science is where we sort of choose which direction we want to go based more on a sort of preconceived notion of what the applications might be. And those usually involve things where we have some handle on the way that particular aspect of the universe works, and we want to refine it so that we can better work on a particular use case. But of course, those aren't the only reasons to do science, and I'll argue that the fundamental reason to do science is, well, it's the some combination of both human curiosity and a desire to improve sort of human decision-making with regards to uh, tool making, aka things like engineering and general decision making, things, you know, like policy regarding the environment and whatnot. That I'd say all of those things can be sort of fed under the umbrella, just generally uh, improving human happiness and quality of life. And some of that happiness does just come though from the you know innate desire to understand the universe we live in. That's, you know, one of the most sort of deeply compelling things about being human, right? Um, probably the most compelling thing about being human is wanting to, you know, connect to, you know, the universe we live in, most importantly, to the other sort of, you know, sentient beings in the universe. And of course, the most important ones are our fellow human beings. Uh, but, you know, let's not... Uh, forget about animals, and also let's not exclude the possibility of artificial intelligence or aliens. You know, that's why my uh, favorite science fictions are usually about, you know, sort of making contact with um, some sort or another of, uh, you know, new consciousness in the universe that we haven't experienced before, but which, you know, we can empathize with and sort of see the experiences of and to, uh, you know, not feel alone in the universe. Uh, but of course, we already have that here on Earth. We have our fellow human beings and we have, you know, the other sentient creatures that inhabit this planet, which they're not the same as human. I, there is a very obvious difference between, you know, various other forms of animals and humans, which I mean, humans are animals by definition. But, you know, nevertheless, it's a uh, you know, I'm not some, like, you know, hardcore vegan or something, but, uh, you know, I think that is always worth noting. But, you know, why do science, right? Um, and, well, it's because it facilitates doing all of those things, right? It facilitates uh, just greater material comfort. Uh, 
it facilitates a direct connection with the underlying universe we live in by just helping us understand it better. Uh, and it, you know, sort of closes the loop between those things because we can develop technologies like the internet and cameras and microphones that let us connect to other sentient beings in the universe and the most sentient beings that we are already aware of are other human beings. And I don't know. I have always found science to just be the most deeply compelling way to connect to the universe we live in. Uh, and, you know, as time has gone on, I've, I've always had some appreciation for this fact, but the more time has gone on, the more I've sort of come to appreciate that the best aspect of that is sort of, you know, sharing that discovery with uh, other people. And I mean that in more than one sense. I mean, both in the sense of sort of communicating your discoveries, but also in the sense of, uh, you know, having people sort of on the journey with you. It's it's uh, wonderful to find something new, uh, but it's even more wonderful to uh, find something new with other people there, you know, to witness it with you. And uh, I don't know, I've always enjoyed it. Uh, and, you know, I'm enjoying being a, you know, essentially a teacher um, and getting to share the sort of knowledge that I've accumulated that in turn has been accumulated through the profound dedication of you know, several generations of scientists before me and uh, being able to sort of share that connection with all of that knowledge to the sort of new generation, although my students are sort of half a generation below me, right? They're or younger than me, I should say. Um, you know, they're sort of, you know, uh, they're starting undergraduate now, so they're about like, you know, 10 to 15 years younger than I am. And, you know, the full generation younger than me is not ready to start undergraduate yet. And I don't know, I I don't want to sort of get sidetracked from my sort of, you know, high-minded, you know, beautiful thoughts with the sort of downside of things, but I do also find myself more and more having to argue and make the case that scientific truth even matters, and I don't want to get super deep into the weeds of politics, but I will say that, you know, there is such a thing as truth, and it does matter, right? I, Because I was getting into an argument, or the start of an argument with my dad, where he was, you know, basically saying, like, you know, uh, it's good to claim that, you know, so-and-so is the, the best or the greatest or whatever, uh, even if it's not true, because, you know, if you're not the best, you're wasting your time. And it's like, there are several levels of toxicity to that statement, um, you know. I don't think you have to be the best at something to be, uh, you know, a worthwhile contributor, you know, um, and I think we should focus more on, you know, doing things together rather than trying to prove that we're the best out of everyone at something. But also, and this is the deeply important part to me as a scientist, there is such a thing as objective reality, right? And you know, I guess now there's this, you know, all these different loaded terminology of like, you know, different philosophies and what they mean. And I sort of get my basic philosophy on truth and epistemology from my high school English teacher, actually, um, who I think, you know, English classes frequently double as sort of basic philosophy classes in high school. And, you know, uh, he explained it as the difference between modernism and postmodernism, which in retrospect, I don't think either one of those terms is particularly well defined. Uh, they're primarily artistic terms, although they they're therefore bleed into liter. They are, you know, relatively meaningful terms in literature uh, and in philosophy. They get sort of muddied a bit, but you know, he explained it as the difference between believing in an objective reality, but that our understanding of that objective reality is inherently flawed uh, versus believing that there is no objective reality whatsoever. Uh, and I am definitely in the camp of believing that there is such a thing as objective reality, uh, but that we uh, can only ever partially understand it. Um, you know, that's kind of the ultimate philosophical conundrum, right? That uh, we clearly exist in some sort of an objective universe, but the experience of consciousness and being is inherently subjective. Uh, and so science to me is a way by which we can 
develop a better, uh, although never perfect, understanding of that underlying objective reality that we all share. And it's ironic that, again, don't want to get too much into the politics, but it's ironic that the people like my dad that like to complain about, you know, uh, you know, this pervasive philosophy of, you know, they call it quote unquote postmodernism, although again, that's a term that's mostly about art and literature and nobody can really define what it means in a philosophical context. But, you know, it's ironically him all, people like him always complaining about it. And, you know, I love my dad, He's, but uh, he has some opinions that are, in addition to me just not agreeing with, are just like internally logically contradictory. They're not, let alone, able to test, uh, stand the test of uh, actual reality. Um, but, you know, I, I think there is such a thing as, you know, a real objective universe that we all live in, and I think it's possible to use the scientific method to understand that universe better. And I think every idea has flaws, right? I don't know if there really is such a thing as a, a theory of everything, and I actually got into physics starting as an engineering major and appreciating the sort of physics approach to problem solving and wanting to take more physics classes rather than sort of um, some idea about wanting to find a theory of everything or something like that. I don't know if there is such a thing as a theory of everything. I don't know if there isn't, because that would itself be a sort of, you know, uh, too much of an absolute statement that uh, can't prove, but um, I don't know. I just think it's dumb that people will complain about this sort of, you know, problem of uh, subjectivity while simultaneously claiming that, oh, the truth doesn't matter, you know, you can just, you know, you can decide what the truth is by, you know, forcing reality to conform to your whims. Um, I don't know. I, uh, yeah. My dad is, uh, he's a decent guy, but uh, I can't help but disagree with him there because I think that uh, science is the best method we've ever found for coming to better understandings, although never perfect understandings, of the universe we live in, and I think that the truth actually matters, that you cannot just uh, design the universe to be how you want it to be, although we do get to make choices about how we want to uh, alter the world we live in, um, you know, and I am deeply appreciative of engineering. Uh, I don't think that my dad's attitude comes from engineering. I think it comes from spending too much time in the corporate world. Um, but uh, yeah, I love science. I love engineering. And I love the truth. I, yeah, let's end on that positive note. <laughs>